Look at this gun. Mud for wax. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. <laughs> Are you kidding? Surfing isn't new, but no one really knows when it started. There's reports of some Europeans showing up in Tahiti back in 1767 and noticing it there. But there's also archaeological evidence that suggests ancient cultures of Peru surfed up to 5,000 years ago. And then some people even say it originated in China long before that. So we've got no idea, really. What we do know is, if you want to sell a car, then the sexy guy in the commercial better be holding the surfboard. I guess that's because people think surfing is cool and edgy, a bit risky, dangerous even. It is those things occasionally, but for the most part, it's just insanely boring. It's absolutely everywhere and just about everyone is doing it. So, in an attempt to save surfing, we made this show. First, we secured 10 Gs in prize money, and then we chose four surfers based on one important detail, having a strong E sound in their name. I'm Ozzy Wright. Solly Bailey. Jake Vincent, but they call me Vinny. I'm Ari Brown, and our most of my mates call me Crookie. Then we loaded them up with four challenges. Space, a competition to see who can ride away the longest. Uncover, the hunt with a budget of $100 and a case of beer for the best pre-love surfboards. Resourcefulness, creating and surfing a Frankenstein surfboard by repairing the ends of two completely different boards. And finally, frictionless, which means surfing with no fins, no skegs, no rudders, just the chaos of slipping around. The first letter of all these challenges, S, U, R, and F, conveniently spells the word surf, which is coincidentally the name of our show. I can't believe that worked out like that. The location of our competition is the world famous coastal town of Byron Bay, New South Wales, Australia. Byron Bay was originally known as Cavern Bar by the Aboriginal people of the Bundjalung Nation who have called the area home for over 20,000 years. By the mid 20th century, Byron Bay was a sleepy farm town and since then it's been a five decade steady infestation of surfers, hippies, tourists, trippers, more hippies, yuppies, influencers and more recently cane toads and celebrities. Jake Vincent, or Vinny, is a 25-year-old semi-pro that is regarded by a couple of his friends as the best small wave surfer in the world. Vinny is also known for having a deep bag of tricks and his technical aerial skills. Surfing's always been more of a fun thing for me because it's never became like a primary income or something, you know, there's less pressure. As well as being surfing's Mary Jester, Vinny spends his time playing music and gardening. Um, and I've got a little worm farm in a bathtub over there, so they can eat all that organic matter, get all the microbes going. If I'm cooking it, like, it like, oh, doesn't matter, I'm not on the big bucks. <laughs> or if the surf's real big, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I might go surf somewhere else. It's like, doesn't matter, I'm not on the big bucks. Like, I've never had to go to Hawaii or anything. <laughs> Our next talent is 26-year-old competitive surfer, Solly Bailey. Unlike Jake, Solly does have to go to Hawaii occasionally, but he sometimes wins major competitions held at one of the scariest waves in the world. The pipeline, bruh. As you might have noticed, Solly's an extremely genetically blessed man with perfectly tan, toned and sculpted features. Over the years, these good looks have given Solly the opportunity to do some part-time modelling to complement his surf career. Hey, 
While Sully grew up surfing the local points and has lived in Byron Bay his entire life, he doesn't feel like he fits the mould of the new age, alternate, eccentric that is the long-standing Byron stereotype. It's probably parts of me that do, for sure, but I'm a hungry little pro surfer at times. That's definitely not the Byron stereotype. Someone who does ride the mystical energy of the rainbow region is our next talent, Ari Brown otherwise known as Crookie. With his brother and a couple of friends, Crookie publishes a local magazine by the name of Baywash. It's Byron Bay's worst magazine. How's this? That reptile it's in Asher Pace's spinach. <laughs> How much does it look like it? Crookie is widely regarded as one of the world's best finless surfers. Despite this, he spends most of his time these days cruising along walls of open ocean in some sort of living tribute to his lord and saviour, Laird Hamilton. Laird, 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 Laird. Our next guest is 19 plus 25 year old surfer, artist and musician, Aussie Wright, or wrong. Favourite thing about Byron is everyone's just pretty cruisy. It's just beautiful. White sandy beach, clear warm water, dolphins, sharks. Pretty lucky. Ozzy is a freewheeling, goofy-footed, aerial pioneer. His groundbreaking movies, Dope's Youth, 156 Tricks, and the one where he rode around on a unicorn have all had a huge impact on international surf culture, making him an entire generation's favourite surfer. He's also a globally recognised artist who has had shows in Australia, USA, Japan, France, England, Switzerland, and Indonesia. Basically an unstoppable creative beast. <laughs> Ozzy's latest habit is three surfs before breakfast and sewing. The beginning of... 2019, I got a sewing machine. So sort of instead of drawing and painting, I just started doing sewing and collaging them together, kind of. And I got right into it, and I sewed and sewed and sewed for two years, and I've sewed so many things. The first challenge in our weird experimental competition is space, otherwise known as length of ride. Otherwise, otherwise known as who can ride a wave the longest. Once upon a time, length of ride was part of the judging criteria that decided surfing's champions. That was until everyone realised it's a completely redundant thing to pay attention to, especially compared to the more radical parts of surfing. Which is true, and it's a pretty good point, unless it's the only thing you focus on. Like we are in the first challenge of this groundbreaking competition. And our length of ride, that's my new goal, is length of ride in life. <laughs> Try and get a real long <laughs> ride of staying alive. Love length of ride. Yeah, quite into quite into um, long waves. A good long wave is as sweet as a really satisfying short wave. Who do I think would win the space challenge? I th if I was to take a pick out of the four of us, probably Ari. Sounds like as a crookie, you'll be um, a force to be reckoned with. Probably reckon crookie because that's pretty much what he does all the time anyway. I'll win. The way that he surfs and his style. I mean, at least he, he can't use a hydrofoil. When the goal is length of ride, your equipment choice is everything and there are no secrets on how to solve that equation. For the space challenge, I'm going to try to find a 10-0 soft top and put one fit on the inside rail. I think Joel Fitz has a couple of big 88s that Nicole Kimpin bought when he was coaching her, her kids how to surf. Some Hollywood money paid for this board. Whoa. Sorry, Nicole. I'll bring the big soft top. The big dog. And then this could go good too. This has got secret technology. Cane toad. Cane toad technology. Like, as you probably can see behind here, most of this stuff's crazy high performance contest stuff. I would like to borrow a couple for sure. <sighs> Jeez, so much weight in it. This is it, isn't it? I actually don't even know if I've ridden a board this long ever in my life. What do you reckon? Should I see how much it is? <laughs> Tax receipt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this thing. <laughs> The 
The rules for the space challenge are no hydrofoils, no SUPs, surfers must be standing, drop-ins are allowed slash recommended, sabotage is also allowed slash recommended. The winning surfer of the Space Challenge will be whoever rides the single longest wave during our session. And this challenge will be judged by four of Rip Curl's GPS surf watches, which will track each surfer's waves from an international space station or uh, how, just however they work. I was just trimming along the wave and then it just went crack, crack, crack and just stopped. Like the board just stopped in its tracks. Byron Bay's most well-known surf spot is the pass, a sand bottom right-hand point break that often has small waves that seem to run on forever. It accommodates all levels of surfing, making it one of the most crowded waves in the world. The point at the pass is a run of sand that stretches for a little over one kilometre which if you don't know is a thousand metres. Or if you're living in a country that hasn't yet adapted to the far superior metric system is 0.621371 miles or 3,281 feet. <laughs> I'm gonna swap from the uh, 11 footer to my 20. It's fine on the long board, but I wanna surf one now. Crookie were way out the back and then we saw this wide one and we just paddled like that way. We were like, yes, look at this one. And then we just got up and then was going for ages and then Solly got up and was just ripping behind us. And it just went all the way, the whole way. And then at the end it sucked up and everyone kind of fell off. How sick was our wave then? Dude, it was so much fun. It's too much work on a little board though. It's all about the big board. I can't believe I got exploded in the phone. I know. I was, that, that's the winning wave. <laughs> don't, don't you reckon? Yeah. How, did you I, go all the way to the beach? Nah, but a fair bit longer. That's I, a, I fell on my belly, but I got back up. Yeah. <laughs> that was so yeah. sick. Oh, you, you fell to your belly in the foam explosion? Yeah, in the explosion. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm still in for it. <laughs> During the session, the surfers had no idea how long their rides were so far and wouldn't find out how long their longest waves were until we revealed the results days later. They were completely in the dark, but in the first half of the session, they all managed to catch waves that spanned over 500 metres. All of them except Vinny, that is, who after his windsurfer exploded, spent the first half of the session running around the car park trying to find a replacement board. All right, so I've got another board. It's only about 20 kilos, the other one was about 40 kilos. Um, but it's got a fin, it's got a fin in it that's stuck in there. And um, hopefully it'll stay intact. They're aware of my technique that I've come, um, I've come up with, and it's um, like grinding the wave for an extra like 20 meters in the whitewash. Like everyone's running finless setups, and they can't can't do it. Like I'm just getting this little 
little um, cheeky bonus bit, and I don't know if they're aware of it, so I'm just keeping it on the hush. <laughs> All four of us got away, and Ozzy was the last man standing. So it could have been, could have very well been the wave of the day. I somehow like got scissored on the back of um Vinny's board and I unfortunately had to leave the party early and then I think some guy was like in their way and cock blocked them and Solly and uh, Vinny had to like peel off and Ozzy got the green light and like the boys reckon it was probably the longest one so pretty mental. I was like, where well, is he? I bet he's still going. <laughs> and I was looking back and I couldn't no, see it. I went, I got, yes. I got it was so lucky because early on I could have either gone inside of Solly or outside. Yeah. And I just went, I'll take the outside line. Oh, <laughs> it's hard to get tactical in the moment. Wow. That was fun out there though. How fun was it? It was almost the best pass I've ever had. I don't know. It's now time for the surface to meet up, review the footage, and see who will take home the ultimate glory for SURF's first challenge. Thank you. That's on TV. Get her going. Look how fast you're going out there on that wall. I milked this for so long. <laughs> wow. It's even longer than fast forward. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> No that was so good. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, got your money's worth out of that one. Thanks. <laughs> is this the, the arm? Oh, yeah. Oh, mental. I feel like this is the winning wave. Nicely done, boys. It's now time to announce each surfer's longest wave and the Space Challenge winner. Whoa, that's Whoa. so far. What? Oh shit. Right. So I didn't think. That's fucking crazy. I'll take Whoa. it. Oh, okay. 600. <laughs> so Solid. Nice. Whoa, four. What was it? Uh, what was the last one for? 623. Oh, that's close. Wow. Yeah, that's surprising. Huh? Whoa, there's only that's meters so in it. That's close. crazy. Huh? How accurate are these watches? Vinny. Woo. Nice one. Oz? <laughs> Hey, wow, that's it. big. Ozzy! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats! Thanks, guys. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, with each challenge, there'll be a total of 24 points on offer. After the first challenge, Ozzy is in front with nine points, followed by Vinny with seven points, Solly is in third with five points, and Crookie is dead last with a measly three points. In the next episode of SURF, our servers will take on the Uncover Challenge. In this challenge, Ozzy, Crookie, Solly, and Vinny will compete on the best secondhand surfboards they can find with a budget of $100 and a case of Byron Bay Premium Lager. There's no options. Like, look at this. Hmm. How much is there? Pretty slim pickings in the old bone breakers in terms of boards. Local motion looks bullshit. In exchange. Amazing. Oh yeah, and you want some cash too? You drink? Cheers. <laughs> 100, I'll give you that. Thank you.
definitely going to have to say thanks to um, Joel Fitzgerald for lending me the board because uh, I didn't have any boards long enough. Take me such a distance. And I'd like to thank my fellow competitors for uh, pushing the level of long distance surfing. Perfect set of the pass. We all got it right out the back and took it all the way to the end. Like, it's just as fun as it gets. It's, I love riding waves with friends too. And, uh, you know, sharing the waves. So good. Party waves are all. In your soul.